Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series RPG in a Box. I am Karsten. In the last episode, we covered ambient and direction lighting and built up a full day night cycle. And now we want to add light sources to our dark nights. So we handle object lighting in this episode and we attach light sources and glowing voxels to our characters, objects, and tiles to shape our ambience. So let's start with adjusting our night presets. So from the last episode, we have the preset night and we want to apply this. So we have a very slow intensity, a very low intensity of the light. We can also adjust it to a much lower level, but it's okay for now. And then we have to disable the day night cycle. Otherwise, it would be overwritten again and again. Every time a new night cycle starts, our preset will be overwritten by the midday or the night preset. And it's uh, the sun is moving around and around. So we need a fixed light preset to see our torches exactly. And then we will start with building a torch. So to get information about this, you can use the help section and search positional lighting. Here's everything about this, and because I guess you won't read the documentation, I will explain it in detail. So let's start with positional lighting. What is positional lighting? So the positional lighting is an omnidirectional light, which is a light source without a direction. So the light is uh, is flowing, uh, is, is, is emitted light is like a sphere in every direction with the same amount. So, and we can attach this to our characters, tiles, uh, and the objects as well, and also to attached objects on objects and such things. And we will cover this in detail now while building up a torch. So, I prepared this beautiful torch with a metal mount for the walls and also a wooden handle. And um, that's the basket where the, the, the flame should be. And we can also do this with attach points and a straight wooden part, which is attached and uh, adjusted in the angle. But it's okay for now. And we want attach the fire on top of it. So we have different ways to do this. We can use uh, colored voxels like this, and we can attach this to our object and then animate the colors and the flickering like this, you know. Um, but for this torch, I want to use an um, effect. So we will use a real fire effect, but we have to have in mind that it's at the cost of performance. So if we have a lot of these torches, the performance will decrease significantly. So we have to use it uh, in a moderate amount. So let's start with the fire effect. So we create our flame effect in the effects editor by creating a new one and call it flame. And then we can use the preset flame. So we have to do just a few settings. In the effect properties, we will do the changes. So we want emit some particles and not just a single shot like this. So let one shot be off. And we want to use 100 particles. If we increase this too much, we have a big cost of performance. So beware to don't increase the particle amount as much. So the lifetime determines how long our particles are alive. So that's okay. And the box size is also pretty good. And I like the color from yellow to, 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 uh, to red. And we just adjust the, the velocity. Yeah, the velocity. So the initial velocity is one. We see it by raising the particles to the top. So, and we can increase this effect. So our fire is pulled on top by increasing the linear acceleration as well. So let's set a value of 1.5. So it's much more visible. And we use a radial acceleration. If we set it to a positive value, they are spread around. And we want to center it in the middle. So we use a radial acceleration by minus one which makes a tiny spot at the top of the flame. And then we use a tangential acceleration by minus 0.2, which rotates the cubes in a circle. So 
I think that's a pretty good fire animation. And now we want to attach this on our torch. So well, let's save this. So we won't be able to turn off our torch on and off in the future. So we need an animation for a not burning torch and a burning torch. So the first one is already made by this animation. So we can simply duplicate the animation frame to a second frame to build up our burning animation. So and now we need an attachment position. So we set it on top of the torch and call it flame. So and then we want to adjust it in the center. So let's go to the model properties. And then we adjust this to a x offset of 0 and y offset of minus 4, which is in the middle. And then we make the set offset a little bit higher, so maybe 11, like this. OK. And we use a scale factor of 1.0. Otherwise, every attached object or effect is scaled up. And uh, nice to know. I use a default scale of 0 0.75. So the model is reduced by these two voxels in the width. And so if we use this model on a wall, we have a gap which is exactly the size of the thickness of our wall. So it's attached at the wall and not inside the wall. We will see this in the map a bit under. So now we can attach our effect to our model. So the first frame has an attach point, so it's pretty good. And the second one has it, and we attach the attach point with a configure attach object or effect. And now we attach at the flame point the effect called flame, and we want to automatically attach this in game. And now we have our flame, and we have to readjust the set positioning. So we set this to, I think, 10.5. So it's pretty good. OK, and then I will delete my default animations so we can do it together again. So we want an animation for a not burning flame. So we use the animation key off. And that's the animation key 1 to 1. And we use clamp so we can uh, save performance because the animation stops after the first frame and isn't played again and again and again. So that's pretty good. And the second animation we want to use is the default key. So this is the default in the map, and we haven't to do anything than putting our map uh, or torch in the map. And there we use a ping pong animation, and we want to extend it in the future. So let's set a speed of 10, and that's OK. And we will check the off animation is off, and the default animation is the burning flame. So that's our torch model. So before putting this in our map, we can adjust a little bit. So we can use the default frame of two instead of the first one, which is this animation. Otherwise, this would be the standard animation frame in the map. So we haven't a burning torch. And because a burning torch is pretty cool, we use the second animation frame. And we can also adjust the preview to the second frame and make a thumbnail. So we have a nice object preview. And now we can set it to the map. So because our object has a size of 16 times 16 times 16, we are at the lower line of our walls. So we can increase this by raising the height to 32 and moving the object with uh, the selection and the moving keys uh, 16 voxels higher. But in the meantime, Justin make a new patch. And he added the object offsets. So now we can adjust this in the map. So we rotate this. So our uh, torch is exactly connected to the wall, which you can see now. So that is the gap because of the 0 0.75 um, scale factor. And we set it to the wall. And now we can, oh, let's be more precise. So we have to be careful, because our interaction line is as well of 
at set zero. So we have to attach the objects at set zero too and not look at this and not at the wall, which is zero, uh, set one. So be careful to set this at a zero set level like this. Otherwise, we cannot interact with our torches in the game. So, and to adjust the offset, we can use the entity properties. And now we can use an offset of minus 16 to plus 33. And we use an offset of 16 in the set axis. And now it's at the high of our face. So that's pretty well. And as you see, I have a script attached to, our, uh, to my torch. So I'm able to turn it on and off. And how I made this, we will explain in detail now. So we now go to the script editor and build our script from scratch. So I just erased, uh, deleted my torch script, and now we want to do it again. So let's go to the script editor and add a new script and call it torch script. script. So like this. Skipped? No. Excuse me, but not like this. Let's call it torch script, like this. And we don't need a display message. <clears throat> what we want to do is evaluating the model properties. So at first, we want to add a model property called is on, which is a Boolean. So I will delete this too. So let's add this and it's is on and it describes if the torch is on or off. So let's make it a boolean and set it to true. So the default behaviors are torch is on. So now we can use the evaluate condition <clears throat> and can say self property and our property name is is on should be equal to the boolean true. So is it overrides my settings if I choose anything in the select boxes. So if the self property is on is true, so the torch is burning, we want to play an animation. So use play animation for is true. And else, so if it is not true, we also play an animation. And now let's look at the model details. So we have the default animation, which is the, the turned on, and the off animation is the turned off torch. So let's handle this. If is on is true, we play the animation name off. So we turn it off. And otherwise, we play the animation default. So and then we have to reassign our value. And we simply copy the self property is on to this and set this to false. And this one to true. And now we read it like starts if our torch is on, we play the animation to turn it off, and then it is off. Otherwise, it is off. We play the animation default, which turns the torch on, and then it's on, like this. Because I added it previously to my object, I have my torch script, and it's updated automatically. You have to set your torch script to the torch if you want to do it as the, uh, at your version. And now we are able to interact with our torch. So we will check it in the map editor as well. So our script is attached to our torch objects as well. And we have the darkness in the scene. And we also turned off the day night settings. Okay, so let's jump in the game. And now we see a burning flame like this. And we are able to interact with our torch so we can turn it on and off, which is pretty well. But 
as you see, we have no light emitting from our torch because we don't edit a light source until now. And we also have no flickering. So we want to add the light source in the first step. So let's jump back in the object editor. And if we go to model properties, we can scroll to the light source. So, and we want to use the second frame for our torch to build up our lights. So if we turn this on, we get the light source settings. So I have to readjust the position of my panel. And I want to explain you the settings. So as the ambient lighting or the directional lighting, we can choose a light color from the color pack, uh, picker. So we can use every single color we want. So because our fire is going to red, we use this red animate uh, this red um, color for our animation. And we can also adjust the energy, which is the power of our light source. So zero isn't no and is no light, and sixteen is uh, much um, over over extended uh, light. Don't even have the word. So, and we can check the negative box, which um, negates our light color. So, the blue one is, I think, going yellow or green or something like this. But I, I couldn't figure out for what exactly it is used. So, I haven't a real scenario to use it. Uh, maybe in the future, I will figure out anything and I will uh, edit it in, uh, in one of the next tutorials. So let's come to the range. The range describes how far our light is emitted. So and that's uh, nearly a tile. So an amount of five is uh, nearly uh, close to five tiles. It's a little bit more. But we can see it in the map editor, so we can save this now, and we can go to the map editor, and now we see we have a sphere of a lighting effect. And it's round about up to five tiles next to our torch. So we can increase this up to 100, and we can set it to zero, so we have no light. So let's use an amount of five. The next thing is the attenuation, which is a dampering or the reduction of the light per, um, per range. So we reduce the amount of the light um, while the light is going away from the source. So if we have a maximum of 100, the light is reduced to zero from the start. So we can see also this in the map editor, so we have no light. And we have to reduce this to a smaller amount. So also, if we use an amount of zero, we get a glitch. <clears throat> I will save this. And if we go to the map editor, we see a black uh, square and a light circle. Uh, I reported this bug yesterday and Justin uh, will fix this in the next uh, patch so that isn't possible anymore um, and you have to use an attenuation value um, at a minimum of 0 0.01 this is the absolute minimum and, and you go up as high as you want so we can use this okay and that's it for our light and now we want to adjust the position of our light we can do this by the x and the y and z offset. So we also set this to zero and this to minus four. So we are at straight line of the attach point. And now we increase the set layer to be in the middle of the basket, like 11. Okay, or 10. I think 10 is it. So, and now we have a light attached to our torch. And if we change the animation frame, we see every single animation frame has the same amount. So it's not animated at all. And we can change this by marking the animated checkbox. So every single frame gets a, a, a unique setting for the light. And to turn the light off in the first animation frame, we can go to this frame. 
and we will reduce the energy of the light to zero and set everything to zero except the attenuation, which stays at 0 0.01. And we set this also to zero. And now we can turn our light on and off in the map. And we also see a glowing effect in the night. So we have to readjust this to an amount of, why is this so high? So four tiles, and I want to do the preview again. So like this. And previously we could set the, the attenuation to an um, amount of uh, minus anything. And uh, this comes with uh, increasing the light per distance. I'm struggling with the amount as well. Ah. I, I I use an attenuation of zero so the light isn't um, <laughs> yeah the light isn't reduced so we have a um, constantly uh, um, same bright light circle so I have to adjust my attenuation of course so like ten and this is a nearly natural result like like this so we see a light source at the wall and our attached models aren't updated, so we have to do this again if we want to have um, a real preview of our light setting, like this. And we readjust the offsets as well. And now we have a burning torch in the night. So I restored my object from my episode preparations. So I pre-made this in the meantime, and I will show you the result. So we have the first frame, which is the not burning torch. And the second uh, frame is the burning torch with our attached light at the attachment point. And then I played a lot with my settings to get a real fire animation. So um, it has it should have a flickering light so, and we can change everything between the frames so we can choose every single frame and can change uh, the color of the light in the different frames so maybe to blue so we see the blue color, the blue light and the red light and we can also have positions uh, unique positions in each frame so uh, the first try i didn't play it with blue but with uh, yellow orange and red tones and it wasn't a real light it's more like a disco feeling so I uh, asked the Discord community for help and Fonk had a great idea. She told me to not playing with the colors of the light, instead playing with the positions of the light. So we get the real flickering from the shadows at the wall. So and I implemented this. So I play with the positions. If you look at this, my position is moving aside on, uh, on top and I raise and uh, decrease, increase and decrease the positions and set it a right and left and something. Um, additional, I changed the energy. So if you look at the left side here, you see I have a, a, the energy value and twice of this is the range. And I increase this from 2 to 2.2 .2 and 4.4, then to 2.3 and 4.6. And then I decrease it to 2.2 and 4.4 again, and then to 2.1 and 2, uh, 4.2. And additional to this, I also changed the time steps. So the first is with one time step, we have 10 time steps or 10 frames per second. So this uses one time slot of a time frame, this 0 0.3, then 0 0.5, 1.5, 0.5 and 0 0.3, so it's like a sinus curve. And this is great to have a real flickering torch. So, and now we can choose this. We can check if it's in the map. So I have a misaligned frame, and I also want to change this so I have the real preview of the light. If you change any light sources, you have the problem of, um, what's this? probably a glitch so let's stay at the single light source i will fix this later so we set this 
16 voxels higher and then we should see the flickering torch in the map. So from time to time it's possible you have a, that you have an interactable object so we can uh, erase it by release, uh, deleting the tile where the object is attached on top. So and now we can put, turn it on and off and we see the flickering at the wall and this is really great. And in the next part I will show you how to script your positional lighting so you can build scripts where all torches are uh, turned off by stepping on the tile or all you you kill an enemy and all torches are burning instantly or changing the, the the color to blue or something like this so you can have a sequence of several objects and a script in so let's have a look at the scripting part so we use our torch script and if you want to see which features are possible you can always use the available functions filter so we use the positional position entity lighting entity lighting so it's positional lighting in the documentation now but, the, uh, but the, the functions are called entity lighting functions so we have um, like previously the color and intensity and enable and disable like in the episode before so you can watch the previous episode it's uh, quite the same and we have other set, uh, values as well and we have also the documentation so we can use um, entity light and we have the explanation of the functions here as well so we see the um, the interface where we can use it and you see it's not the same set of functions so the documentation is not every time up to date because of the regular changes so you have to stay close to the script editor to see it and we want to use this to play with our torch now so we want to set also the diameter with is the range so this is the property range the distance where the light is emitted so we use this now and change the intensity uh, not the intensity the diameter to 10 uh, over five seconds it's like in the previous tutorial we have the transition time so that the the change occurs not instantly, instead smoothly over a duration of five seconds. And we can stack this with a change in the attenuation to uh, 0 0.01 also over five seconds. And we can um, play that together like this, and we can um, queue this with a wait function in between, so we can use the weight as well and can use the weight in the middle so the first is the change of the diameter and then after five seconds so we have to make it the same time uh, the attenuation would change so we can play this um, step by step by step and can stack this together so that's a possibility to build queues and we also want to change the functions entity light to a diameter of two back to two in five seconds and an attenuation of 10 i used i think also in five seconds and now we can choose these values so we toggle this and we save it and check if it's attached on the torches but it should have on the torches because the name of the script doesn't change so the, the content of the script is changed immediately so okay like this so let's go to the map and now while we interact with the torch it changes the range and the attenuation so no we missed to change the turning on and turning off of the map so we have to erase the animation 
So we just change the diameter and the attenuation, and we misuse the property is on and off to toggle the values. So, and then we see what I mentioned before with the animation frames. So if I click on the torch, you see it's flickering. This is because we overwrite a single animation frame and all others are replaced by the animation sequence. So we have first to turn the torch in a static animation. So I fixed my torch in the meantime, and then I want to show you something more. We have also group scripting functions. So we can look to group, set group, and we can also change the color of a complete group of objects, tiles or something else to a specific color, and we can uh, turn it on and off. But it doesn't solve the, the problem. So we have to set every single torch in the static animation and we can use this with um, group uh, play um, group animation. But previously we have to set our torches to a group or give them IDs to handle this. There are other ways as well. We can uh, create entity or we can get entities from tiles attached on this, but it's a little bit uh, Complicated, so we will handle this in the scripting session. So we call this a light one for the left light, and the right light we call a light two. So everyone has an ID. And additional, we select both of them and gave them the group um, lights. So we have a group with both torches, and every single torch has its own ID. And now we can use this for scripting. Let's save this. For the scripting part, we can also use the, the script editor with the code, and we can also combine this with our function sets, so we can um, double click in the section, so we can edit this with the keyboard, and we can also use the functions in the left panel and direct them at a position, so the code is included directly in your script. So you can play with a buff the coding itself and the drag and drop um, to learn how scripting works. I'm struggling how to design the, the scripting episodes so I don't miss you and it's um, it should be clearly to understand how scripting works. So I'm still in concept making and it will take a few episodes until we start with scripting in detail. And I want to build it from scratch with um, variable types and something like this. So let's start with the live scripting. So I, as I described, you can switch between the drag and drop coding with boxes and uh, the coding itself line by line. So you can choose every single function I call in the debug uh, console in your script as well by changing the lowercase letters to uppercase and the underscore to a space or use this as I type it in the console and your scripting editor. So first, we want to disable a um, torch. So we gave them a name and we say set entity light enabled. And now we choose um, entity. We do it with the entity keyword, entity and T and we have to define it so we get them from uh, its ID, light one, and then we can set it true or false. So we want to turn it off. So that's to false. So and now we see a flickering because our animation loop is uh, overriding it again and again and again. So we turn this off first. To do it with one single torch, we can change the animation, but we can also change the animation of a complete group. So we can use um, play um, group animation, and now we have to choose um, a group ID, and we gave them the name lights. So both objects are in the group lights, lights, and then we play the animation called uh, off to turn it off in the first step, like this, and we can use the default 
with his our flickering light and to change it individually with the different values by script so um, have the full magic in our hands we can use this get hick as a, something like a hack so we bring that in a, in, a, in a static position so we can change everything so and now we can use the functions to change a single torch so we can have a set entity entity no oh, what's up entity light enabled and we have to define the entity entity and that is light one and we can set it to false like this so it doesn't change everything with the effect. So we have to detach the effect if we want to do this, but we can uh, change light and this episode covers the lighting. So, and we make this back to true. And you also can use the, the arrow keys up and down to go over your last used functions. So then we can change the color of a single entity. As in the last episode, we can use the color keyword color to define a new color, and we can use a hex value, um, double zero to red, green, and full blue. And we can give it a transition time of five seconds as well. And now it's going to be blue, and we can change this back to red. And the last um, the last value is optional, so we can uh, leave them away and it's um, instantly changed. And we can also change the intensity, which is the power of our light source. And we can define it between 0 and 16, so we give it a full 16 in 5 seconds. So then we can choose the diameter, which is the range. Diameter. And we can set this to 20 and also instantly or with a uh, transition time. And then we can change the attenuation as well. So attenuation. And as I said, if we set it to zero, we get the glitch. So we see it here. We can also set it to a negative value but it should be gone uh, in the next update. So the minimum value should then be uh, 0.01, like this. Uh, this is like a, like a torch, not like a torch, like a flashlight directed to the ground, a very great flashlight. So uh, um, um, as a real big light spot. So you can use this for such things. So let's then change back to 10. And we can also use the group functions. So we can uh, handle a complete group with um, set um, group light enabled. And we can define the group, which is, oh no, this is um, the ID lights. And we can set them to false and also to true. And we can change the color of the complete group. And can also use the RGB values like a zero. And you have to set a space after a comma and 255 and instantly. So we have a blue light now. Okay. So that's about this. Uh, about the scripting and we can also um, change the color of the complete group, uh, not the color of the complete group, the attenuation, the diameter or something else, but we have to do it in another way. So we can use the print statement so we can see something in the console, like the player maybe. So you see your name and your position. <clears throat> and we can also print a group. So we can define our group and give it a name lights we used before. So we see, oh, that's an array, something like a list. And there's our two objects, a torch and another torch. So, and then we can use this in a for loop to go over the complete group 
and change the colors and uh, the diameter and something else for every single object in the group. And this is powerful enough so that we can uh, do every uh, change without have a group function for this. So I told about the scripting of pool groups with um, several entities in the group. So this is the script we can use. The script in the first try sets the complete group to li uh, lights to static. Then we go over each single light in the group and set each light individually to an intensity of 10, the diameter of 10, <coughs> and the light to blue over 10 seconds. And then we wait. So every of this is um, calculated, uh, happens at the same time. So first, for the first light of the group, we change all three um, settings. Then the second light, we do this as well. And then we come to the wait section. If we place the wait at this position, we change the intensity of the first light, waiting sec the 10 seconds, then the diameter, then the color, we wait again, we come to the second light, we change the intensity, then the diameter, then the color, each individually over 10 seconds, and then we come out of the loop. And we don't want this, we want it to play simultaneous. So we do it like this. We change every three values for uh, all above uh, objects, then we wait the 10 seconds to apply the settings in the 10 seconds, then we do it in reverse, we additional wait 10 seconds and we switch the lights back to default. So to try this, we can add our script as a torch as well, but it's it handles a complete group, so it isn't unnatural. We can set it in a trigger field on the ground as before, and I will let it stay in the, in the torches. But if we cl click it twice, we're starting the same script uh, and they are concurrent to each other, so we have glitches. So we have to build a semaphore or an, an, a lock, and I will describe this in the scripting sessions later. So if we click on the torch, we see the light is changing to blue, additional the attenuation and the diameter of the torch as well. And after 10 seconds, it changes back to the red one for every single torch on the map. And the script ends by setting the torches back to default and the flickering comes again. So this way you can handle that you enter a room and there are hundreds of crystals and everything making a light bulb or an, an, a flash or something like this. So you can play uh, simultaneous animations and changes on over dozens or hundreds of objects at the same time. So let's have a little showcase what I did in the episode preparations. Besides the torches, I also created objects. Uh, the object crystal has a, something like a torch, a light at the wall in different colors changed by the animation and also with a light source and additional as a tile so I can chain, uh, place it everywhere in the map. Uh, here it is. And I also um, created um, a stone pillar with an animated light so we can play this and we have a, a pulsing light in the middle we will see that later in the night uh, preview and then i built a standing torch as well so we can place this everywhere on the map not just at walls and additional i created a uh, lantern for a street and uh, I said we don't have flashlights but we can play with something like this and placing the light source uh, close to the close to the ground so we have uh, the imagination that we have a light um, emitted directly to this position which emits the light as well and so we can have something like the street lantern it doesn't uh, matches pretty well with my medieval setting but i decided to make this as a showcase so i will show you the result and then i delete it as well so like this and we see we have uh, a lighted body and we have the flash light spot under the lantern 
So, additional, I played with characters and I built up a character which I want to add uh, in the later episodes as a water enemy. Um, it's a water slime hiding in the in the water and attacking the player while he's close to this. And I will um, build this up in the next episode. So it's a short preview about the topics in the next episodes. And it has an idle animation where it um, flows into a tiny spot at the ground and then it's hunting you while you come close to it. And it's also animated with light. So that's about the light sources. And now we have to do another topic which is the emissive colors and the glowing. So for the emissive colors preview, I created this wonderful mushrooms. So I will erase the emissive colors. So like with the transparent colors before, we can also define emissive colors, which is a glowing, a luminous coloring. So we can, shade, uh, we can pick a color from the object model and add it to the emissive colors. And simply that's it. We don't have other settings for emissive colors in the object editor. So, and the object defined with emissive colors will not emit light directly. It's more like a glowing in the dark. So we see it in the map editor. If we go to the map editor and we choose the mushrooms, we can place it everywhere on the map. And we see they have a glowing and we cannot adjust the glowing directly uh, with the object model, as I said. Um, it's, a, it's a very obvious um, object because it's so bright in the dark and we can set the, op uh, the, 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 the scene now to a complete darkness. So let's change the intensity to zero. And in the previous episode, we, we've seen that there is no light and we should see nothing without light. But the emissive color objects, you can spot this in the darkness because of its uh, emissive color nature. So, and to adjust to this, um, the emissive colors work, uh, the, the emissive colors are working best in dark, uh, dark environments. So if you have too much light in your scene, you doesn't recognize them at all. So it's like a normal mushroom. So, um, it fits best in the darkness. So let's turn it back to the lights off and we can play with this. Oh no, um, I can show it in a better way with the bright scene. So we can adjust these objects in the map editor by adding the glowing. So we have the glow layers again. And as I described previously, the glow layers are like spheres. So you have these seven glow layers, which are spheres of different um, diameter or range. So this is the shortest and you see a small glow. And while we increase the checkboxes, the range increases as well. And that is also true in the darkness, but not as obvious. So we can use this glowing as well. And now we have the imagination, they emit light but it's just the glowing. So and we can combine several boxes together to increase this to its maximum. So we can play with this. So that's it about the emissive colors. You can um, choose this to, uh, um, to bring the attention of the player to quest objects in the darkness uh, and a book and, uh, at a, uh, on a table with uh, your quest or something else or an arrow about your quest giving NPC or something like this. So it's a pretty nice feature, but you have to play a little bit around to figure out how powerful it truly is. So I restored my full map from the preparation. So you see, I have added torches everywhere on the scene. And as I mentioned, if you uh, use too much torches, you get a um, performance problem, but not with 100 particles and a few torches. Uh, I also added the slimes into the river. So they are hunting the, the player if you come close to it and they can walk to the, uh, they can walk in the water and, um, over the river, but your player cannot 
And how to do this, I will cover in the next episode. So it's like a little teaser for the next episodes, um, what we will cover next. So let's jump in the game and I will give you a full preview. I really don't like teasers because there's a lot of pressure to uh, make the episodes quickly, but um, I implemented special features which brings the scene at its best. So that are the, the water slimes which are coming out of the, of the of the river and hunting the player. And we can also play with every little torch, uh, every single torch. And I added a cellar in the side room and in later episodes we will build a mine where we can go to mining, crafting and um, hunting for enemies and something like this. So I built the crystals to make the luminous colors and uh, the light sources so we have light in the darkness. I built a lava river which is with emissive colors and the light source, uh, the glowing mushrooms and I also added our pulsing pillars and a moving platform. So that are probably the topics of the next episodes, how to build moving platforms, how to script this all together. And hopefully this episode helps you a lot by making a real great game. And as always, if you liked it so far, please give me a thumbs up. I would be very excited about your subscription and hopefully I see you in one of the next episodes. So have a nice day. Bye.